Good afternoon. It's five. We'll get started. I want to welcome you. My name is Shirley Favors, and I am one of five career advisors at the University of Dayton's Career Services. I want to welcome you to the cover letter workshop entitled Got You Covered? Write a Winning Cover Letter. I am Shirley Favors. And um, I just want to let you know that this is a repeated workshop. So if you're here uh, wanting to get points for this, if you did attend back in the fall, uh, you will not get points for this again. Of course, I welcome you if you're interested in the, uh, the information that will be shared this evening, by all means, we welcome you. Uh, and it will be videotaped, so you can look at that. But we wanna get started, okay? So uh, my title is I'm Career Advising Liaison for the College of Arts and Sciences, but I also am accustomed to working with all majors. And I also assist uh, with the Office of Multi-Ethnic Education Engagement Center. You might ask yourself, and maybe some of you in the audience did have the opportunity to uh, attend the career fair, our virtual career fair that we had last week on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. As a result of that, in some cases, when you come in touch uh, with a, uh, in contact with a representative from a company, it might be a good idea to send them a cover letter. There's different types of cover letters. We will talk about them today, but you might ask, well, why use a cover letter, period? Uh, some of the reasons here we have on the screen, you wanna be able to customize your background uh, particularly for a specific job. And you wanna be able to uh, have that reader understand just by summarizing your skills and experiences and uh, those experiences that are relevant to the specific employment opportunities that you're going after. Uh, in uh, the case of the virtual career fair, perhaps you talked about aspects of a particular job and um, it might be a good idea to send that person a cover letter um, actually indicating those particular things that were discussed when you had an opportunity to talk with a representative, perhaps doing a one-on-one -on -one session or uh, during a group session. Another thing we need to think about why to use a cover letter would be to demonstrate your research, your writing and analytical uh, skills. Um, this would allow you the opportunity to communicate your knowledge about that employer. When you're looking for a job, it's also a good idea to have some knowledge of the industry so you can understand what it is they do and their positioning in that industry and the career field as well. You also want to convey uh, that you are motivated and interested in the position, showing professionalism and you wanna reflect your personality with the enthusiasm that you show and the interest by asking them questions. Uh, along with the, the presentation this evening, I'm going to let you know at times it may be beneficial for you to use your uh, phone camera to just take pictures of some of the points that I make because I feel that you might find this helpful. So uh, in some cases, I realize that we may have some people in the audience that's just starting out and maybe you've not had a job or maybe just one job. So we might say your experience is minimal to uh, solid work experience and, it's, uh, and your current status is really, you've not had a lot of work experience. So you might want to consider uh, what key skills you had by looking at other experiences in your life that you've been exposed to. And such would be like relevant class projects. Some of you may be planning on participating in the standard symposium of this year, or maybe you had an opportunity to participate in it um, previous years. But also think about that because you have to think about, well, what was, um, what was I required to do? And of what I did, did that or would that display to a potential employer uh, my, the skills that I have for this position. And so you might want to just take a picture of this list so you can go back through and, and think about it. How many of you have been uh, 
perhaps involved in group projects where you had to give a class presentation, a group presentation together? What was your responsibility in that group? Did you lead the group? This is something that uh, will be important to uh, potential employers. And a lot of times when you um, think about some things, you might want to include that in a cover letter, okay? Have you done presentations in the past using PowerPoint or Prezi or even a Zoom taped presentation? I know that many of you in the class uh, assignments that you have have had to work with simulated companies or a simulation of some kind. It might be noted uh, to include that in the cover letter, especially if it uh, is related to the type of job that you're going after. Extracurricular activities, Christmas on campus, your campus activities perhaps with sororities or fraternities or, or student organizations. Community activities, not only on the campus, but off the campus. Um, when I think about that, I think of uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, or Habitat for Humanities. In many cases, we may be assigned to work on a research paper. What have you learned from that research paper that you can actually use what you learned in a particular job that might be relevant that you're going to apply for? It might be uh, advantageous to include that in the cover letter. A cover letter should not exceed one page. And a cover letter, again, should not exceed actually three to four paragraphs, okay? Sometimes we learn in a class from hands-on if we have a lab or we have a professor that demonstrate what's to be done and you learn from that the hands-on assignments. You might wanna include those as well your lab experiences, or how many of us have had an opportunity to study abroad. And so now we're familiar with the culture and we may speak other languages. There are many companies these days that have uh, multiple locations um, and may be interested in knowing that you know uh, more than one language and are familiar with the cultures. And volunteer activities. How many of us have volunteered at food banks throughout the year? Or we've been exposed to some things that we've not done before, but we can let them know that we volunteered. So these would be good activities to think about to make reference to in a cover letter. Now, I want you to think very carefully when you explain something in a cover letter, we tend to, when we write cover letters, we tend to write the way we talk but then we have to stop and think, there are words that we need to avoid. And these words would be known as um, competence or qualifiers. We don't wanna use a qualifier that shows a lack of confidence. And a lack of confidence qualifiers, examples would be, I feel, I think, or I believe. You know, if you think for one moment, if you, exchange places with the interviewer and you had about 15 people you interviewed and then you had to stop and think and make a decision on who it is you would actually choose to hire. Would you go with a person that told you, I think I can do the job or would you go with the person that says, I'm sure or I'm confident, I'm convinced or I'm certain that I can do the job and then follow that up. It's not enough just to say I'm certain I can do the job but you want to be able to also parallel that with um, a, an experience that is so similar to uh, requiring the task that you had to perform on that job or project and show that it was successful. And you're also saying that you're, I'm certain that I can do this particular job because I'm familiar with the method, I've done it before and I've been successful. So I'm sure that I can do the job. So. These words at the bottom here, you might want to take a picture of those in a place of not only a cover letter in the statement of purpose, for those of you who are thinking about putting together a statement of purpose, you also want to think about using qualifying words that are strong, like I'm confident, I'm convinced, I'm certain, or I'm positive. 
not I think, or I believe, or I feel. Now we're gonna break the cover letter down in parts. So the first part of a cover letter, particularly if you're going to mail it or email it, uh, you need to show that you're familiar with a cover letter. And so the first part of a cover letter consists of a return address. And so that would have your street address, either you can use the one here on campus, particularly if you're going to work in the Dayton area, or some of you might be thinking about, well, I really want summer work and uh, I'm concentrating on an area close to home, then you might wanna use your home address with that. And so we're giving you the format here, the street address that you would use, the city and the state, and then you would uh, drop about two, you would enter two lines and then enter the date that you're doing this. So then the demonstration is, uh, such as up here, we're saying uh, 519 Hire Me Lane, Dayton, Ohio, and then two line spaces. And then you put in the date that you're actually um, creating the cover letter. Now, another way you can do this is um, if you have a resume already created, you could cut and paste the header of the resume at the top of your cover letter. And that takes on the look of letterhead like we've done here with Frederick Wilson. We just cut and paste that from his, uh, the top of his resume. Also in his resume, he had a copy of his um, email address. And we also had the LinkedIn address. So you can do that as well. Then you will want to hit enter and then start with the date. So uh, this again is known as the return address date part of the cover letter. Then as we take it a step further, as we go down further, then we're going into the body of the uh, cover letter. So we wanna start out with the header and salutation, which you should try and get the name of the person that you're going to send the letter to. So, and then look at their title. It might be Mr. or Ms. or Mr. or Dr. And so you wanna make sure that you spell their names correctly. And if you've not had an opportunity to meet them, or if you've been emailing them, but you've not actually met them in person, uh, let's still respect them and not call them by their first name. So you would put their whole name in the header of the header and salutation section of the cover letter. And beneath that, you need to follow with their title. And then you can mention the department if you know it, and you might wanna bold type the name of the company and then the street address of the company, the city and the state. So as you look further down here, you see that uh, we start with the salutation, salutation and dear Mr. or Miss or whatever their last name is. And then after that, you want two spaces again. Now that takes us on into the body of the cover letter, which I had stated earlier, will in most cases consist of three to four paragraphs. Sometimes you can merge the third and fourth paragraph together. The first paragraph, uh, we're letting you know you need to engage the reader. You might wanna make reference to how you found out about it. And you wanna state your goal and the title of the position in which you're pursuing. Sometimes the company will have more than one position. So it's helpful to uh, that you all, always uh, refer to the title. Some companies might not have a title, sometimes they have a code. So if they've given you a code for that position, that's what you wanna enter at that time. Um, if you have been uh, referred from someone, like let's say a professor says, oh, I have a friend at this particular company and uh, just tell them that I told you to apply for this position. So then you wanna make sure that you enter the person's name that told you so that this person, cause sometimes when people do that, this same professor might call the person and say, I told this person to apply. So look for a letter from this person. And, uh, and so that means the person that's doing the hiring might be looking for this letter and also the reference that you make to the person that told you to apply to this. And so this is when you do that. Now you shouldn't use a person's name 
saying that that person referred you without their permission. In this case where I'm explaining to you that a professor or faculty member came to you and said, go ahead and put my name, then you got their permission. But then you might want to contact someone or reach out to a person that know that you know that may affiliate with people at a particular company that you're interested in applying. And then that person, then you could ask them, is it okay if I use your name? If they say sure, then go ahead and use it, perhaps in the first paragraph to personalize it. Those personalize the letter by expressing an interest in the particular employer and demonstrate that you've done some research about the organization. When I say research, you might want to mention that you understand that they are number two or number one in the city for perhaps uh, their services or a product that they sell, okay? The second paragraph, you wanna sell yourself. You wanna be as specific as possible in addressing the requirements. So that means you have to read the job listings very closely and then highlight those things that they are saying that are important. Now, they're not gonna say that they're important, but they have ways of letting you know that they would prefer you have certain skills. Sometimes um, in University of Dayton's job listings, they will refer to it as preferred skills. Sometimes in other listings, you will see them say must haves, okay? What I'm going to share with you today, because I've been doing this for 33, 30, yeah, 33 years. Um, I would say any particular title job that you're going after, Google the must have skills that employers look for in this particular job title. Now, I'm not saying cheat and just put them all in there because if you do that, you will be in trouble during the interview because they will ask you to uh, perhaps, uh, can you elaborate on it? I'm, I'm asking you to do this so that perhaps you won't miss out on any uh, skills that you possess. So this would be a good way of doing that. So again, you might wanna Google, must have skills for a particular job title, or you might say must have skills for the particular um, major that you are majoring in. And a lot of times uh, Balance and Zip Recruiter will list and will even have a chart of skills that most employers look for. And I'm telling you at this time, don't just take them and throw them in the cover letter because that's not gonna help you out. But what you must do, or I would suggest you do, is look at those skills and then also just take inventory yourself of, oh, I possess this, or think about what you've done in class, what you've volunteered to do, and also what jobs you've had in the past that have given you an opportunity to perhaps acquire those skills. And then you have something to back you up so when they ask you about elaborating about those skills, you can uh, make reference to where you learned them and what you've done. So you wanna describe your most relevant qualifications and illustrate with examples. Those examples would be, as I stated before, and the uh, screen where we had you take pictures of different types of things that you've done before that you could make reference to. The third paragraph, you want to close and, uh, with enthusiasm and restate your interest in the opportunity. And in other words, in some cases, you can ask for the interview. It just depends on how they have it set up. If they don't want any phone calls, that kind of limits you. But uh, you may indicate that you'll call to follow up. Uh, that is, if you're certain you will do this, and if the employer has not specified, because sometimes they'll say no calls, please. And so that kind of leaves you locked out, but you can still uh, Google or even go into LinkedIn and put the name of the company in and see what past alums or students have worked for the company and even talk with them and see if you find out more about uh, positions and the company uh, by talking with them. Now we're going to take each paragraph and even give you an example, but we talked about the first paragraph and uh, you're stating a goal and uh, also perhaps mentioning uh, whether a person referred you. But uh, now on a resume, you don't include uh, pronouns, but in a cover letter you do. So in this instance, just for the example, I'm eager to join your team at whatever the name of the 
uh, company is in the role of whatever the job title or code is, which is posted in the University of Dayton uh, handshake database. As an international studies major with a passion for global cultures and a background working with youth, I look forward to using my education and experience to guide your students population. Now we're going to take it a little further. That was the first paragraph and we want to go to the second just to see the difference in what we need to do. So the second paragraph we have talked before about it's all about the skills or training that you've had before and how you can make it relevant to that job that you're applying. Okay. So in this instance, the person is saying, my first experience abroad was during high school. I studied in Latin America with a program similar to yours. This experience, in addition to family travel and a college semester in Madrid, has made me aware of the importance of cross-cultural learning and global understanding. In addition, my role as a tutor and camp counselor has trained me to work with young people of all ages. Okay, so we're almost done with the letter, but then there's also some other things we have to look at. Okay, so we wanna look at pertinent parts of the cover letter in the second paragraph. You could also, as an example, to bullet your format. You don't necessarily have to have it just in a paragraph. It might help you, particularly if the um, employer has a number of um, what they call must-haves or preferred skills. You might want to make a chart, and I have it at the end of the presentation, which you could take a picture of, but then make a copy of that chart and see what it is they want. And then next to that chart of the things they want, put in the things that you can do. And that might be what you want to bullet. So in this case, uh, the second paragraph, rather than have just the paragraph like we just showed you, they broke it down into bullet form. So they uh, commitment to healthcare exemplified by my volunteer work at Miami Valley Hospital and my active leadership with the Student Health Advisory Board to Alpha Epsilon Delta Student Health Service Organization. That's the first bullet. The second, strong communication skills learned through a curriculum focusing on psychotherapy and practiced in positions as diverse as an assistant group therapist with the Dayton Mental Health and Telephone Fundraisers for the University of Dayton. Uh, thirdly, what they mentioned was analytical thinking and problem solving skills cultivated as program coordinator for the University of Dayton freshman, and I usually say first year, orientation community service, which involved matching 356 students. It's a good idea whenever you can quantify, include the number. So when I say quantify, that would include how many students did you work with? Or how many, uh, if you helped with the fundraising, how much money did you raise? That might be something that would interest them as well. So just to, we're get, showing you an example here, this person was able to be involved with matching 356 students to volunteer positions throughout the greater Dayton area. And lastly, what they mentioned, it doesn't have to be four, it could just be two to three, doesn't have to be all this many, just thought I'd give you uh, these different examples. Teamwork and collaboration skills demonstrated as a productive new member of an existing clinical team at both the Dayton Mental Health and Miami Valley Hospital. So that almost highlights some things that this person has done, and they show that it relates to the job in which they're applying. The third paragraph, if we're just going to do paragraph and not bullet it, was you want to close with letting the prospective employer know that you're interested in perhaps uh, meeting up or following up uh, with an interview if you can. So you restate your interest in the opportunity uh, and an interview. You may indicate that you'll call to follow up or sometimes, well, we don't have much of a spring break this year, but sometimes when we have a few days off, 
we might send ahead. Now's the time to do it. So if you know of some days coming up that you're going to be in the area, you might mention that and maybe the employer will set up a time to, of course, these days you're dealing more with virtual interviews than you are with face-to-face. -face. So if you're certain you will uh, do this and if the employer has not specified no calls, then employers appreciate your initiative and motivation and they may reach out to you. Uh, what this person says, to give you an example, uh, your job description emphasizes the importance of collaboration, teamwork, and communication. These are qualities and skills that I have developed as a varsity tennis athlete and an ESL teacher in the local community and a student assistant in the International Relations Department at the University of Dayton. Each role involves widely varying populations and tasks that I manage and enjoy. Each one demands an ability to work effectively, both independently and as part of a team. I'm confident, notice we said confident, I'm confident or positive or sure, I can meet the demands of your position. Thank you for considering me for your team. I welcome your call or email at, and then you leave that. Now, remember there were two ways you could actually start out the letter. If you cut and paste the header from your resume and put it at the top of the cover letter, that takes on the look of letterhead. You could actually change the ending and say something to the effect, I can be reached at the above contact information because then they'll be able to see it and they can contact you from there. Okay, you can make reference to the email. Um, you might even have your LinkedIn up there where they could look at other referred uh, if you have some projects that uh, you have emphasized in your LinkedIn, they could even take a look at that. Okay, there are different types of letters. Some of the letters that you're going to come in uh, close contact with would be anytime you see a position that's posted, we have what we call an application letter. You use an application letter uh, to respond to specific job postings. And in the application letter, what you wanna do is emphasize your qualifications and how they fit the requirements that uh, were stated in the position description. And you wanna decide which skills you possess, such as your education and experience and interest that show how well you fit into the position. And so if you wish, you might wanna take a picture of this application letter because you're going to be coming in contact more with the application letter and a thank you letter, perhaps more so, and an acceptance letter than some of the others I'm getting ready to show you. There is another letter and we also put it in the chat, but I'll bring it up now. It's called a qualification letter. What you do with this, is basically the same thing as you would with a application letter. But there are some companies that tend to go in great detail about the qualifications that they're looking for. Now, you know that header I was telling you about in the cover letter where this is an example of it, where you cut and paste your contact information from your resume and you put it at the top of the letter and see how nice that looks, that looks professional if you choose to do that. And then in the bottom you have Below that, you have the month, date, year, and the contact, just like what we covered a few moments ago, and the name of the contact person. But see, you could bullet basically what they stipulated here. So my unique combination of professional experience, training, and education has enabled me to acquire an extensive skill set, which I'm certain is compatible with your employment needs. And so we go into that. So if that's something you think would be easier to follow, you might want to do that. And I do want to point out um, that it is better if you're going to use bullets that you use these round filled in type bullets because of the applicant tracking systems that many companies have now, they're very, they somewhat finicky because sometimes they will reject your resume and cover letter if you use any other type bullets other than these that we're showing you here. Okay, so that was the application letter. 
And so now you know what it's used for and you'll have an example in your phone you can take a look at and perhaps kind of change it around a bit. Another letter, which I know that there are some students that think, well, I'm, you know, I don't send many thank you letters, but believe me, thank you letters are important. Through the years, the many years that I've worked here at the University of Dayton, I've served, served on a number of um, search committees. And it's always surprised me, well, at first it did anyway, but I've been on so many search committees. It's interesting, after we interview the various um, candidates, <coughs> usually the person that is over the search will have a meeting and it goes something like this. Well, of the candidates that we've talked with, Thus far, we've only received thank you notes and there'll be a spreadsheet and they have it checked off. There's, uh, we've only received thank you notes from these particular candidates. You know, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, wow, do some of the applicants or candidates really realize how important it is to send a thank you note? Because th they're being rated on that. Those that didn't send the thank you note back, we didn't think about calling them back. Okay, now, you may think that, oh, that's not true. But I mean, in most cases, in the experience that I've had, it is true. So it's very important to send a thank you letter back after you've interviewed with the person within 24 hours after the interview. I know I talked with someone the other day and said, yeah, I think I sent them a thank you letter about 10 weeks out. Was it 10 weeks? No wonder you're still looking for work. Okay, let it be 24 hours, okay, within that time. So you almost want to have it created, but then you do want to um, enter some information in there that uh, perhaps of what you talked about. So if it's not possible to send a thank you letter to everyone you met during the interview, send a thank you to the host and ask that they extend your appreciation to the group. You also send to each contact who granted you an information interview and for people who provided references for you, okay? So always follow up with a thank you letter. Sometimes a thank you letter will give you the opportunity to approach that person again and they may be able to help you in the future with things. If you haven't thanked them, it's a little awkward the next time you see them. So it is important to have a thank you letter. So if you take a picture of this, you see the person uh, pretty much the same setup with the uh, zip code and the date above, but then it's not that lengthy. And they're saying, thank you very much for interviewing me yesterday with the, whatever the name of the position is. In this case, we're saying associate engineer position. I enjoyed learning more about your research and design work. My enthusiasm for the position and my interest in working for AES were strengthened as a result of the interview. My education and co-op experiences, uh, some of you may have had an opportunity to co-op, that's a plus as well, match the job requirements. And I'm certain that I could make a significant contribution to the firm over time. I'd like to reiterate my strong interest in the position and work with you and your staff. Please feel free to contact me at the above contact information. So you'd have your contact information above here. Another letter that you may come in contact with, uh, and not only letter, for those of you who use LinkedIn and you've reached out to connect with persons, you may want to make a copy of this just to help you think of what to say when you reach out to network. This type of correspondence can be used to generate informational interviews, sometimes in some of your classes when they talk about networking, a form of networking is not only just to get ready for the job interview, it's to gather information about the industry and about the company. And one good way to do that would be to first of all, approach any family members or friends or acquaintances that know of professionals in a field that you're interested in. And then you might wanna reach out to that person and let them know, I'm interested in working in the advertising field or engineering or whatever the field might be. And I understand that you work for this particular company. Would you have time to set aside maybe 15 minutes to 30 minutes just to talk about the industry? 
these days with the pandemic, it's going to be advantageous for you to talk with a professional within the field. Now, if you don't know of anyone, you might want to reach out to Flyer Connections and or either go back into LinkedIn and do a search of UD alums with the same degree that you are pursuing and then look by city what company they're working and that would give you an idea of the companies that's hiring persons with uh, your same degree or major. And so you might want to reach out to some of those alums and just ask them questions. One good question to ask them at this point would be, how has the pandemic affected um, your employment or your industry? Is it different now? Because we'd really need to know that. It would be advantageous for you to know that and prepare you for the future. So a networking letter is important, but it's also important to use the same words or similar in a LinkedIn contact when you reach out to persons and you might want to set up some informational interviews. Another letter, which you probably think at this point, do I have to do this? There are some companies that are set up in a way where after you've interviewed with them and then they get back with you, they may um, contact you by phone or by letter or both and let you know that they want to extend an offer to you. But then they're not, that offer is not valid until you accept. And it may not be enough for you to accept on the phone. They may want that acceptance in writing. And so hence you have the acceptance cover letter. Okay, so you use to accept the job offer in order to confirm the terms of the employment, be it uh, internship or co-op or full-time or part-time or whatever. Uh, particularly if it's full-time, you might want to specify the salary that you've settled on, the starting date, the medical examinations, if uh, that is a requirement. And most often an acceptance letter follows a phone conversation, like I mentioned before, sometimes they'll call you beforehand. And then during which uh, the details of the offer that you discussed on the phone will show up in the letter. And so you just wanna check everything out and you need to send them an acceptance letter. So everyone that's in the audience that you might not have gotten to this step yet, but it might be useful to take a picture of this so you know you'll have it and you'll remind yourself like, I just got offered a job. Now you might not have this so much with an internship, but I'm talking basically a full-time job. You may want to pull this up and uh, just reminisce on what things you might want to cover and say. Of course, you can always uh, approach the career services office if you have further questions about it, but just thought I would let you know that this is important. and. Uh, many companies will say it's, it's really not done or complete without receiving an acceptance letter from you. I made reference uh, to this chart, and this is something, it doesn't have to be exactly like this, but as you look at different uh, positions or postings, job postings, as I mentioned, sometimes companies will specify uh, what a candidate must have in order to be considered for the position. And if they're not using must have, they might say like so many of the uh, positions for UD, they're calling it preferred uh, skills. And then sometimes they'll list some skills under not as preferred, but I mean, they would still consider them. So it's very important for you to first of all, look at the must haves and the preferred skills and ask yourself, and maybe make a chart like this and say of the jobs and internship requirements, what are the employer's top needs? And then you list the skills. And then sometimes they will even say, it would he be helpful if the person is knowledgeable about these certain things. You wanna list those in the knowledge and maybe has had experience working with people of a certain age uh, or um, people of a certain culture. And so you might wanna list that and then go to the right side of it and then list the skills that you actually possess. And then with that, you might want to bullet those and go back to that qualification type letter. And if you do not wish to bullet, you could still include it uh, in a paragraph, okay? 
So that's what we want to do with that. And I know I've talked a lot and covered a lot of things. Uh, we also have some uh, items in the chat that um, you are welcome to take with you today. Um, I know one thing that I included was um, the action verb link, because sometimes when we're writing a letter, uh, we can't think of a word to use. And so I thought it might be helpful for you to um, use the action verb uh, list that we say it's resume action verb, but it's also ideal for a cover letter when you're writing to perhaps refer to that. And so you will find that in the chat. Um, also, you want to, uh, you'll, you'll find in the chat, because we're at the end, but uh, are there any questions at this time? Anyone? You can either put it in the chat or at this time, unmute and state the question. Uh, while we have everyone thinking of questions they'd like to ask, I'd just like to remind everyone here that if you have any additional questions about cover letters, you're free to drop into the Career Services drop-in hours hosted by myself and the other career peer mentors. I'll put that link in the chat, but something that we do on the daily is resume and cover letter review. Um, and I'm sure we can help you with all these different types of letters or forward you to a career advisor if we think you need additional services. Thank so you, Jamie. Thank you. And um, they are available for walk-ins at this address that she's providing. Is that from 1215 until 3 Monday through Friday? Yes, 1215 okay. p.m. Monday through Friday. Great, great. Thank you. We, we want to be at your service, and I don't know whether you realize this or not, the services that we provide are not only available to you up until the time you um, graduate, these services are available to you up until the time you retire. I guess, did you hear what I said? Until you retire. So I'm sorry, I'm hearing that the age is changing from 65 to 85, so it's going to be a long time there, but we can, we will still uh, assist you in any way that we can with that. Also, as we get near the end, um, there are questions that we're asking that you answer briefly before you leave. And I wanna thank you for attending. 